One of the most common ways to make ethers is to do a reaction called the Williamson ether synthesis. But before we talk about the Williamson ether synthesis, we need to talk about how to make one of the precursors for the reaction, and that's an alkoxide. So we are going to make alkoxides. Now, you might wonder, well, we never worried about making alkoxides before. What are examples of alkoxides? Things like sodium ethoxide. That is an alkoxide. And whenever we needed sodium ethoxide in, in the past, we, we just say, fine, let's just add sodium ethoxide. But sometimes we don't want, need just trivial examples. We need fancy ones. And these, as it turns out, are made from alcohols. So if we want to make specifically sodium ethoxide, we would take, start with ethanol, and there are two ways to do it. Um, number one, we would add sodium to this, sodium metal. So that Na0, that means zero oxidation state sodium, that's metallic sodium. And we'd simply take a beaker of ethanol and we'd slowly add sodium metal to this. Now what's gonna happen is, Sodium reacts with the alcohol, the OH, and it makes hydrogen gas. That hydrogen gas forms, it fizzes out, and once it's done, what you have left behind is sodium ethoxide. And what people typically do on this, they don't, they don't do like a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium to ethanol. Instead, they they probably take maybe a you know a one liter a one liter of ethanol. And they'd add one mole of sodium and let that stir around. And once they're done, they'd have a liter of solution. Ethanol is a solvent. And they'd have one mole of sodium methoxide. And they'd say, hey, ta-da, we made a one molar, one mole per liter solution of sodium methoxide. Whenever they needed some sodium methoxide, they go to that one that one liter solution, they take some out, and they use it in a reaction. So that's probably the most common way to make an alkoxide. You take the original alcohol, could be something simple like ethanol, could be more exotic, like cyclohexanol, and you react it with sodium and you get the deprotonated alcohol. What's the other way to do this? Well, the other way to do it, let's go ahead and use something like cyclohexanol is to treat this not with sodium metal, this is technically a redox reaction, but something called sodium hydride. Sodium hydride is a source of Na plus H minus, and it's actually a base. And what this does is it deprotonates our alcohol. Now I very foolishly didn't draw my alcohol so I can deprotonate it. Let's redraw it down here. What happens is simply H minus attacks and it deprotonates that oxygen. We get O minus, Na plus. Again, we've made an alkoxide. And plus, again, we simply form hydrogen gas. And what's that do? It bubbles away and leaves our alkoxide. So these are two very simple way, ways to make alkoxides. And this is nice because now our alkoxides have two common uses. One, they're strong bases. When I say strong bases, I'm normally signaling for an E2 reaction. They're also pretty good nucleophiles. And they're, so they're, for, they're pretty good for SN2 reactions. So now that's how we're going to use our alkoxides. Typically, we're going to use them for an SN2 reaction in the next video. Just gonna press.